Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Let's get our rundown on the Bulldogs from the SEC in Starkville and Mississippi State from Alex Gomez. Uh, you can join him and the rest of the staff there at the SB Nations for whom the cowbell tolls. Alex, how you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I appreciate you uh, stopping by to get us set on a state. Hail State, of course. Forever and always, uh, man. Yeah, the 2018 season. So I'll take it from my perspective. You straighten me out. Uh, four and four in the SEC, eight and five after the bowl loss to Iowa. Uh, there were certainly thoughts, uh, not just in the SEC, but around the country, that if there was a dark horse in the SEC Western Division or maybe the entire conference, it was Mississippi State. Uh, devastating defensive talent, especially along the defensive front. Nick Fitzgerald coming back that uh, and uh, a complement of wide receivers that had more upside than what we've seen in recent years that Mississippi State could really take off, uh, but it didn't quite happen. Yeah, that, that seems to be, you know, kind of a, a reoccurring trend throughout a, a couple of our sports teams right now. Um, you know, there's a there's a lot there's a lot that could be made of, of what happened this season. I, I think there's a lot of disappointment um, from the fan base. Uh, I think that a coaching change probably came at, at maybe one of the worst times in program history, um, just because there is such a, a huge turnover that, that had to happen in terms of, you know, offensive scheme, defensive scheme. Uh, you know, it, it takes a lot more to win football games than talent. Um, we've seen a lot of really talented football teams not win games. And, and that's why there's great coaches and that's why there's not great coaches. Um, I think that it, you know, with a, a quarterback coming off a severe, severe injury, um, you know, maybe maybe a little overhype um, just because we, we have been there before, um, especially, you know, with the 2014 season. And we felt like there was a lot of similarities to the DAC and the rise to number one and, and all that. So I think personally that expectations might have been just a little too high. Um, and that could have been part of what seemed like a letdown of the fan base. But that's just me personally. Got Alex Gomez on the line uh, from For Whom the Cowbell Tolls. It's the SB Nation site for Mississippi State Athletics talking uh, Bulldog football, of course. So, Alex, uh, does it appear from your perspective and from the fan base that this was a missed opportunity uh, based on the talent that was there in play? And as you mentioned, uh, a coaching change, even if it turns out to be uh, a good one in the long term, is usually a difficult transition for most uh programs or is it a situation in which okay we missed an opportunity but we're still on an upward trajectory uh we still look good for the future 2019 could be a really good year i think it's the latter i, I think it is uh there wasn't a lot of uh recruits that really shied away from you know mississippi state based on what they saw this year there wasn't i mean there's just there's a lot of promise going forward i think that you know had he not signed a top 25 class had he not you know, kept let them rolling in a positive direction, then you might want to, you know, throw the red flag up. The, you know, here's here's an issue. But he kept everything rolling pretty good. Everything seems like it's trending in the right direction. He got a good quarterback. I think that things are headed the, in a good way for the Bulldogs. Talking up the Bulldogs with Alex Gomez. You can join him and the rest of the SB Nation staff there at uh, For Whom the Cowbell Tolls. They cover Mississippi State Athletics, of course, headed toward March Madness. The baseball season is always a big one there at Mississippi State as well. We're talking football with the Bulldogs coming off 8-5, and 4-4 four and four in the SEC. Pretty much a typical showing. I, I, I'm i not saying that in a derogatory way or a complimentary way, but that's that's become under Dan Mullen, even going back to my days uh, covering uh, athletics there at Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and Alabama under Jackie Sherrill. 8-5 and is kind of the the groove. If you were going to pick one record on a 13 game schedule going to a bowl game, Alex, uh, eight and five might hit the mark over the last 25 years. Yeah, that, it's definitely it's something that, you know, I, I guess it's good as a fan base that we're starting to get disappointed with. Um, it shows you where the program is headed. Um, being a state fan is, is definitely been a, never been an easy thing. Um, so th and that's one thing I, I try to remind a lot of people. Uh, about is that you know there were there was seasons where you know we would have loved to go eight and five we would have loved to go six and six um so eight to be disappointed with eight and five which a, a lot of the fans have been I, I think just shows you how much this program has developed how much you know it's really headed in the right direction and so i mean 
you know, when we'll get to a point where it'd be like Alabama going eight and five, everybody would be pretty upset. Um, and I, and I think that's, that's hopefully where the program is headed to, to make, make it where, you know, eight and five is expectation now, but, but eventually it's, it's not going to be a thing that, that everybody's going to want for a long time. Talking Mississippi State football, enjoying the conversation with Alex Gomez from uh, For Whom the Cowbell Tolls, the SB Nation platform for Mississippi State Athletics. Of course, uh, this time last year, we were waiting to see how Joe Moorhead would conduct himself and run a program uh, with his first real shot at a big-time school as the head coach, of course, coming uh, from Penn State as offensive coordinator. And now that we're one year in, your thoughts about Moorhead, any coaching changes on the staff this year? I know that there wasn't a whole lot of upheaval, uh, but your thoughts about Moorhead and the coaching staff coming into 2019? Yeah, I definitely think we need a barricade on highway, um, on the highway between us and Alabama. Uh, them, them going after our coaches, especially the two that they grabbed, Baker and Huff, that was two um, incredibly tough um, fan favorite player favorite coaches um, and very big in the recruiting process. But overall, I, I like the replacements. They, they got some guys that, um, that I really like. And I know that the UConn, I can't think of his name right off the top of my head, but the guy that the coach that's coming over from UConn, I really like his resume. All the guys that I've looked at, you know, you look into them and they look like they have a good start um, to their coaching career. I think it's, they're perfect coming into the SEC. They have a lot that they can learn. Um, my big thing this year is we don't have as much head coaching experience um, in our coordinating positions like we did last year with uh, Mark Hudspeth, who's back into head coaching job, and and having Huff there, who had a lot of great experience, with, especially with NFL backs. Um, but overall, I, I like the coaching changes that were made. Um, I'm hoping that, that Joe Moorhead has learned a lot from his first season in the SEC. Um, I know that Obviously, it's one of the, the hardest divisions in football, um, maybe in all of football, professional or, <laughs> uh, or, or college football. But um, I think that he learned a lot. I'm, I'm in his favor. Maybe this year he can show a little more emotion um, for us on the sidelines. I think that's what a lot of fans really loved about Dan Mullen was his passion. You know, something didn't go the right way. You, everybody knew it. Um, but well, I believe in him. I still think he's got – some things to prove, you know, you, you put out another six and six season this year or, or a seven and five season, then maybe we start talking about a, a warm chair under Joe Moorhead. 